Alright, so Gemini 3 was just released this week. It's hot off the press and the results are undeniable. In this video, we're going to cover two key things. First, we're going to dive into how Gemini 3 is completely obliterating every single benchmark out there and is on track to be the best AI model of 2025, at least according to Polymarkets. And we can't talk about dominance without bringing up anti-gravity, the new IDE by Google. And one other thing I want to cover is a $3 billion acquisition of a really well-known IDE that fell through for OpenAI and was a long-term play by Google that has now paid off. And then second, we're going to keep things practical. I want to give you the three top ways you can go about using Gemini Pro for free today. Sounds good. Lock in, pop a like on this video, and let's get into it. Before we get into the video, I just want to take 20 seconds out and ask for a favor. Over 96% of the people that watch this channel have not subscribed, and it does amazing things when people do subscribe. So my ask, my one and only ask, is if you've gotten benefit out of this channel, benefit out of this video, please do consider liking and subscribing on the video. All right, so let's get something straight. At a point in time there, Google was asleep at the wheel. And what I mean by this is they, in February 2023, released their version of a competitor to ChatGPT called Google Bard. Now, the debut wasn't just bad, it was a disaster, completely, completely rough. Um, as you can see by this little snippet, the Google shares lost about $100 billion after one demo of Google Bard. There was an error in that demo. Essentially, the AI hallucinated. It came up with non-factual, not real information, uh, made Google look really silly. And uh, yeah, it had a lot of experts really starting to have the conversation around, you know, maybe Google have gotten too big. There's a lot of red tape. Uh, the bureaucracy in the company has gotten to them. They can't innovate as quick as a open AI or Anthropic. Um, and yeah, people had really gotten to this point of starting to question the future of AI when it comes to Google. Now, fast forward two years and or two and a half years, and with the release of Gemini 3 Pro, they have uh, come out the gate swinging. Um, they have toppled the AI game, um, and you know we were essentially wrong. So it's, a, it's kind of their mic drop moment, um, that ultimate comeback. And uh, they didn't just win, they also have completely crushed their competition. So let's have a look at that. The state of the AI wall, cost versus performance. So I've got two benchmark metrics here. Um, now the, the goal with met the benchmarks uh, is low cost, high performance. Um, they always say you have this little triangle that you try and achieve. You can only choose three things, security, cost, or performance. This focuses on those two main attributes, cost and performance. You want low cost, high performance. The first one here is Arc AG1 and this leaderboard. So Arc AGI1 is essentially an AGI yardstick, if you will. And it measures AI versus human-based intelligence, human general intelligence, to measure the AI's intelligence efficiency. So when we look at this chart, you will see you have a score percentage and you have a cost per task. And Gemini 3 DeepThink had a, the highest score percentage to date, as well as a lower cost than O3, which comes from OpenAI slash ChatGPT. So this really goes to show how it's getting closer and closer to human-like intelligence. Not AGI in particular, because we're not there yet, but it is the best model out there when you want to compare to general human intelligence. The other little chart I've got here is LM Arena. Now this is kind of the public people's champion um, competition of AIs, right? So it's head-to-head -head battle between different AI models. You can see all the different AI models on the left-hand side here with Gemini 3 Pro leading um, at the top. Now there's a whole bunch of different test cases. It tests hard prompts, coding, math, creative writing, instruction following, longer queries, multi-turn, and an array of other ones. The point here is Gemini 3 Pro completely obliterated. It's at the top of the heap. You look at GPT-5.1, it is right down here. Really crazy how when you compare that, which also was just released by OpenAI to Gemini 3 Pro, um, you, know, you can't really even compare them with these type of categories. So really shows the power of Gemini 3. And now moving on to the real game changer, which is anti-gravity, the product that was released in association with the Gemini 3 model. So Google didn't just release a model, they actually released a product that we can utilize that model in to build software for ourselves, right? So an IDE, an integrated development environment, is essentially that. Use natural language to build software using the power of AI. And that AI 
is Gemini 3. Now, how did anti-gravity come about? It's really interesting. So if you weren't aware, in May of this year, in May of 2025, OpenAI, which owns ChatGPT, looked to acquire Windsurf for $3 billion. Windsurf was a really well-known IDE platform. So this was seen as ChatGPT or OpenAI were going to move into the IDE game, release their own integrated development environment, and really start competing with the likes of Cursor and all of the others. So that was on the table and that looked like it was going to happen up until kind of the last few minutes, the last few seconds where it fell apart. And what Google did then, they swept in and they actually acquired the team from Windsurf. So they got the best brains from Windsurf and boosted their own AI team with those guys. Now the Windsurf co-founders are the team that is now leading anti-gravity, which is really, really awesome. So Google made a long-term play it paid off, they brought in the right people, and they've been able to now launch a product, which, at, you know, there, there's points where it's brand new, so it's a little bit buggy, but overall, um, and when we get kind of stuck into this and um, you know, really look into anti-gravity, you'll see how powerful this is when building software and code. All right, so the three key ways you can use the Gemini 3 model. The first way is, we just bring this down, AI Studio. So if you come through to aistudio.google.com, you will land on this page. You can go to model and you can obviously select from a range of different models. The one we wanna select from is the default one at this point, Gemini 3 Pro Preview. Right, with that, you can go ahead and describe your idea. So this is just a website you go to. Before we even get into like anti-gravity, right, and a separate IDE platform, which is obviously for very scalable production quality applications, you can still just come to this website for free, I might add, and build a range of different things. Now, what could you build? I want to come to X quickly. And there's a guy called Pietro Schirano. I may have butchered your surname. I apologize. But what he did or what he claimed is he said, I asked Gemini 3 Pro to create a 3D Lego editor in one shot. It nailed the UI, complex spatial logic, and all the functionality entering a new era. So you can see from his video here that we restarted, he literally built a Lego builder, everything incorporating into that. So you can maneuver the entire platform, you can add blocks, you can change colors. Give me a second, I'll actually load it up for you so we can play around. Okay, I can't find where to, uh, the link to this might be, but looking at the video, like I said, you can add different Lego blocks, you can change the shape of the Lego blocks, change the color, maneuver the entire view, and build Lego structures. Now he created this off one prompt. What he did do, or what he did give us at least, is the actual prompt, uh, which is down here. So I've actually copied that prompt, and we're gonna see how well it works in Google AI Studio, which is what he used, right? So we're gonna load that up, we're gonna change um, Gemini 3 Pro, at, we're on the right one, Gemini 3, Pro preview, and we're gonna go ahead and click build. Now, all we're entering in is make a 3D Lego editor, come up with the functionalities yourself, something that makes sense, all in one HTML file. Not a lot of information, natural language, pretty straightforward to the point, let's click build. So I'm gonna let this load up, and we're gonna get to the result shortly, I'll skip to that, and we can have a look at what it builds us. While it's actually building our platform, I think it might be good to go over a couple of aspects here. So. This is Google AI Studio. If you've ever used Lovable, um, or if you've ever done any of my, uh, if you've done my other course on Udemy on vibe coding, uh, which is a really good introductory um, session to vibe coding that covers Lovable, Rock, a few other um, no-code platforms. Very similar to this, right? Very, very similar. It gives you a layout on the left-hand side is the code being built. On the right-hand side is your preview, which you could actually switch to code by just toggling it to here. So this is actually building out all of our code. So you can see all of these files were built with AI, with Gemini 3, and we can now go ahead and preview. So we should have this up and running pretty shortly. Uh, I think we may be good to go. So I'm gonna scroll out here and we've got a platform as we can see. Now we're gonna click add. Oh, okay, there we go. So. Wow, okay, so that's a one by one. So if we go one by two, okay, so there's the, 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 the two, one by two, one by four, yep, okay, two by two. Okay, so there's a two by two. So if we click next to it, click next to it, if we click on top, wow, we can start building some structures. 
You can change the color. If you click right on the side there, oh, see now it's picking up the background. But how good does this in one shot get us as close to what, uh, what Pietra had, uh, had, had done? And this is all in one shot. Now, to give you an example, I found a comment by another person here, by Douglas, and he actually said, my son and I built this in Unity 12 years ago, and he says we worked on it for weeks. So it just shows that weeks ago, and I mean, maybe we can load up this video quickly. Yeah, so very, very similar, right? So this is, I would even say ours is better, because I mean, this was 12 years ago, but in, this was built in Unity, which is a gaming engine, um, and in order to build this out, like he says, it took weeks. Now for us, we've just done that in 30 seconds. We've been able to build out something in 30 seconds. We can add blocks. We can even make these blocks a little bit bigger, two by four. These are the normal like bricks that we know of. And then you can zoom out and you can zoom in and you can go right down to the edge and you can drag and you can look at all of these things. Check, look at like how good this is for a one shot pr prompt, right? 45 bricks placed. What, what's inspire me? I don't even know what inspire me means. Click that, inspire me, does that do anything? Oh wait, there we go. Design a flying taco truck for outer space delivery. So it gives you an idea to, to go with, to, and it's using Gemini 3 to come, that, come up with that, which is awesome. You can remove, you can get rid of these, you can, you can paint, mm, what to paint? Oh, you can paint it another color. All right, so once you've built them, you can just go ahead and change the color. That's cool. Um, you can zoom in, uh, you can rotate. Yep, like we were doing before. And you can go ahead and build this out. So this just shows the power of Gemini 3 in Google AI Studio. Like I said, it's a website you go to. I'll pop a link down in the description below so you can check this out. Literally go and you can build out an array of different things. So to your heart's consent. And then when you wanna to go to the next level, you go to anti-gravity, which we'll cover shortly. All right, so the second way you can go ahead and use the Gemini 3 model is if we scroll down over here, is in Gemini, right? So if we come to, or if you go to gemini.google.com, you will land on this page, which is very, very similar to a chat GPT. It's got a chat interface. You can go ahead, use a bunch of different tools. So you can create images and a red range of others. But let's start with something simple, right? So let's start with, can you please explain the real capabilities of Gemini 3 to me uh, in a nice educational way, uh, keeping it simple and concise? Cool, so I'm gonna put that through. We're then gonna to go to our, uh, we'll actually pop on Thinking with 3 Pro, which will give us a little bit of an extra, a uh, little bit of an extra engine when processing this and go through some more reasoning capabilities when giving us this answer. So let's send this off. And now you can see Gemini is thinking about this. It's going through its explainability. So it's going through uh, a range of different things it's looking at on kind of, we call it maybe the back end, if you want to call it that, but it's going through what it needs to uh, in order to break down our prompt to give us a good example. And over here, you can see it gives us an answer. Now you might be asking me, okay, Jagger, this is great, but uh, ChatGPT can do this. True, but one thing I do like is you can then go to tools and you can pop on a range of different tools. So let's go Canvas, right? So let's go to Canvas. And it says, let's write or build together. So if I went and I do something along the lines of, can you take all this information and put it into a canvas for me? Put that through. Now we have canvas on, we send that through. And now what it's going to do, you'll see in a second, it's now giving us this view. We're on the left-hand side, we have our interaction, our chat. And on the right-hand side, we have a canvas. Now ChatGPT also have this. What I like is, and obviously how you use this is, you can go ahead and now it says here, you can go ahead and ask some more questions and it will basically edit the document or edit the canvas on your right hand side. So for example, if we said, um, this is uh, too short, please can we provide a little bit of a lengthier version, uh, maybe add like a max of like 2000 words, right? So we can send that across and it's gonna then go ahead uh, and edit our canvas to fit the prompt that we, we added on the left-hand side. All right, so it's done now, and you can see it's made this version a lot longer to fit within our 2000 word ballpark. Now, what Google have offered that ChatGPT just can't is you can go ahead and edit in the actual canvas, right? So we can go ahead and change this heading to say heading two, 
We can go ahead and bold different things. So say we're gonna bold this Gemini 3 wording. Just like you would edit a Word document, you can do this. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and say share, or you can export to docs. Once you click export to docs, it's gonna export it to a Google document, right? And we're gonna export to straight into the Google document, and then you can go ahead and make some further edits or share it with your team. And if you are in the Google ecosystem, if you use Google Docs, Google Sheets, the lot, the use of Gemini with Google all within that ecosystem, everything's interconnected, right? Even in Google Docs, we have a little Gemini um, icon that we can click and it opens up Gemini, try at no cost, and we can go through to workspaces.google and sign up for it. And if you have that enabled, you can then use Gemini within your Google Docs anyway. But the interaction between being able to go to gemini.google.com, work on something, be happy with it, and then export it into a document at a click of a button um, really just shows how Google, I, in my opinion, is going to get to that point where they are just dominating because they own that ecosystem, right? They've got heaps of money and they own that entire ecosystem already. Integrating Gemini into every Google product is going to be insane. And I think that's what they're planning to do. So this just goes to show how that is coming about um, already. And last but not least is anti-gravity. Google's new IDE, its version of Cursor, an integrated development environment for scalable production level applications. You start in AI Studio, you get to a point where you know, you want to move into a specific separate IDE environment. Google now have it. Talk about that ecosystem. Everything's interconnected. One of the items I will cover now that I just want to mention because uh, it's something I'm still playing around with and uh, I want to get a little bit more custom to before I showcase it um, so I can really pick up all the nuances is the use of a Google Chrome extension when using anti-gravity. What I mean by that is up until this point with Lovable, with Replit, with Cursor, with any no-code application, it cannot, or the AI, cannot view the um, user interface or outputted from the development of your, your application. So it can only view the code. It can't view if the UI is misaligned. It can't view if you know, there are any bugs that might be on a front end that you know, you'll pick up and you'll take a screenshot of and what you'll usually do is put, uh, send that screenshot through and say, hey, the UI is overlapping. Now, there'll be less bugs because the use of this Chrome extension, your um, Gemini 3 can actually, through anti-gravity, use the Chrome extension to view what it's coding, to view the product of what it's coding, identify any UI issues, identify any front-end issues, identify any bugs, and go ahead and fix those bugs on the fly without you having to even say anything. Maybe you'll have to approve it if you want that level of control. Um, so th there's that, and there's a ton of other things to cover in anti-gravity, but Gemini 3 as a model is super powerful. We've had a look at that. We've seen how powerful it is. Um, and it's utilized across the Gemini interface, AI stu uh, Studio, as well as now anti-gravity. So in my opinion, your day-to-day -day, all the way through to building scalable production level applications with Gemini 3. Um, Google have uh, come in. They have really surprised the entire uh, AI world. You have people like Sam Altman from OpenAI actually congratulating them, as well as Elon Musk. He congratulated them, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if he did, I'll just pop some screenshots here. It's just as proof. And uh, yeah, so Google have uh, come in. They put their foot down and they really telling us that they're here to stay in the AI game and, and to honestly, they're here to dominate. So very, very interesting. We'll see how things go. Uh, it's nice and competitive. Keen to see where OpenAI come in. Keen to see where the Tropic, Grok, all of these other AIs come in um, because now the, you know, the, the race is on, on, on who's going to be the best. But uh, go ahead, play around with Gemini 3. Let me know what you guys think. And if you found some benefit in this video, one thing I do ask is if you'll like and subscribe, it does amazing things for the channel. We are near 10,000 subscribers, which is insane. About 900 or so subscribers to go before the end of the year. Um, it would be awesome if we can achieve that by December 31st. So if you got some benefit out of this, pop a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.